So good to uh, have you here and with us this morning. That's congratulations on uh, getting up early after a late night last night. So uh, we're uh, ready to go. Now we're heading for the finish line, and that may be your finish line. I still got a, we still got uh, a day tomorrow with all of our uh, Global Youth Institute students who I think are here this morning. So with students, I have to take attendance. So all of you stand up so I can count you to make sure you're here and let everybody rec Students, stand up. That's it. Yes, all right. There they are. All right. One, two, three. I, thank you. I know better than to ask whether the teachers are here or not. Yeah, and you can figure out whether you think it's because they would be or they're taking off. That's it. So uh, we uh, have a couple of things to do at the beginning. I want you to uh, enjoy your, your breakfast. And, uh, but to uh, start, uh, we have a special message. Um, you know, there's a, uh, a marvelous connection from the, between uh, the Philippines and uh, the World Food Prize. Dr. M.S. Swaminathan is, uh, is here, and the first World Food Prize laureate and he, when he received the prize for his work uh, in India um, and with Dr. Borlaug, he uh, was heading the International Rice Research Institute in the Philippines in uh, 19, and it was uh, in 1986 and 87. And I only have one bone to pick with you, MS, because I was the deputy U.S. ambassador then, and somehow we didn't meet each other. And uh, so uh, it, uh, I was about to blame you, but of course it was my fault for not uh, getting to know you. But a, a very special moment uh, when uh, President Corazon Aquino, who is one of my personal heroes, uh, who was so incredibly steadfast in uh, the face of violent attempts to overthrow her democratically elected government. And uh, she served on our Council of Advisors as well. And uh, the, we're so uh, thrilled to have a person of her great courage. So uh, we have today with us the Agricultural Attaché of the Philippine Embassy, uh, Jocelyn Havalosa, or as we all know her, Joy. And uh, that. so uh, at this time, I'd uh, like to have you join with me in welcoming Joy Havalosa. Good morning, everyone. Um, I have the pleasure and honor to deliver a message from my government, uh, particularly from the Philippine Department of Agriculture. It will be very short uh, and brief and sweet. Um, we would like to thank Ambassador Quinn for the gracious invitation to convey a message on the occasion of this 2013th Borlaug Dialogue hosted by the World Food Price Foundation, where the late mother of our current president, Benigno Simeon Aquino, served as a member of the Council of Advisors in the late 80s. At that time, when former President Corazon Aquino was with the Council of Advisors, the first World Food Prize was presented to Dr. M.S. Swaminathan, who I, I had the opportunity to sit beside to today, uh, currently the Laureate Selection Committee Chair for his role in developing a new rice variety named IR8, while he was serving as the head of the International Rice Research Institute in Los Banos, Laguna, Philippines. You may recall that IR8 ushered in the so-called Green Revolution. It was the first of a long line of high-yielding rice varieties developed at Erie and distributed not only in the Philippines, but also to other rice-producing countries across the globe. What IR8 did was to fully convince farmers that rice productivity can be increased by adopting new varieties. Since the introduction of IR8, rice farmers have been very receptive of trying new rice varieties and new technologies developed at Erie 
and national rice research institutes worldwide. This year, Dr. Swaminathan's committee selected three awardees whose work continues to push the technology frontier in order to better the plight of farmers and the availability of food for consumers. We therefore wish to join with pleasure in congratulating the 2013 World Food Prize laureates, Dr. Mark Van Montague, Dr. Mary Dell Chilton, and Dr. Robert Fraley for their work in modern agricultural biotechnology that is contributing to improvements in the quality, quantity, and availability of food worldwide. It has been the Philippine government's policy to promote the safe and responsible use of modern biotechnology as one of the means to achieve food security, equal access to health services, a sustainable and safe environment, and industry development. The Philippines was able to benefit from this technology with the adoption by our farmers of BT corn since the year 2003. Adoption of BT corn allowed farmers to increase corn yields, plantings, and incomes. In the year 2012 alone, about 400,000 small farmers benefited from increased incomes attributed to BT corn adoption. We are also looking forward to potential approvals of pending agricultural biotechnology crops such as golden rice, so that this may help address the micronutrient deficiencies of our population whose staple food is rice. In the same way that the work of the first World Food Prize laureate had made a lasting impact, we look forward to further benefits that could be harvested from the work of the three new laureates this year and hope that their contributions will open up more opportunities to support global food security and human development. Our commendation goes to the World Food Prize Foundation as well for carrying out this tradition of recognizing the achievements of individuals who have advanced human development through agriculture. May this inspire further individuals in pursuit of improving food supply and eliminating hunger worldwide. So it's really great we have a lot of young people today to be inspired some more. Thank you and best wishes to all who are dedicating time and effort towards realizing a more food secure world, especially in these times of climate volatility and concerns about sustainability of food production. Salamat po at mabuhay. So, yeah, thank you, Joy. Now, you know, you brought a message to us, so I need everybody in the room to help me. We want to send a message back. You know, when, when you're a diplomat, I know, you know, you write messages back uh, and send them, and, the, uh, and then they get read by the foreign minister or maybe at the presidential palace at uh, that. So uh, the message we want you to send back is how thrilled we would be to have President Aquino the current President Aquino, come next year, 2014, on our 100th anniversary of Dr. Borlaug as part of his centennial. And, and you know, a son's always going to be good when it's about his mom, right? Just they happen to be, both be presidents of a, you know, a major country, but uh, that we would love to have him. And this is the invitation. Now, it's, you know, if it's just from Ambassador Quinn, so, you know, but... And that, but if it's for everybody in the room, that's right. So, if you agree with me? That's it. So, yes. Yeah, so, you know, that, and, and you know, and, and and I used to, you know, embellish some of my messages. Just you know, occasionally, like saying, you know, everyone was uh, clamoring for the president to be here. So, all right. Anyway, we would be uh, thrilled. But speaking about uh, being here or not being here, uh, this one of. Uh, the previous speakers at, at this event was Dr. Rajiv Shah, who, you know, the U.S. government has uh, been closed for a while, it's back open uh, again, but uh, they had to cancel all of their travel here. But uh, Raj sent us a video to, uh, to see, and so while you're enjoying your breakfast, and 
and that uh, we'll uh, we'll show the video, and then uh, we'll take a little break, and then I'll be back up to uh, introduce our uh, main uh, uh, speaker and main guest of honor this morning, and that. So uh, here's the here's the video, and then enjoy your breakfast. We're here today because improvements in agriculture can make an enormous difference. Now, here in Senegal and across Africa, most people are employed in agriculture. And we know that compared to other sectors, growth in agriculture is far more effective in reducing poverty, including among women. Part of why this work is so important is because if you want broad-based economic growth, uh, in a country like Senegal, starting with these small-scale farmers, putting more income into their pockets uh, ensures that you know, it's not just a few who are benefiting uh, from development, but everybody's benefiting, and it makes an enormous difference. That's why when I took office, uh, we took at new ways that we could provide assistance and partner with countries, and we decided to make food security a priority. We help mobilize uh, the leading economies uh, around the world on this mission. In the United States, we launched our new initiative called Feed the Future, which works in partnership with 12 African countries. We know this works. Uh, today, we're going to be releasing a report that shows progress so far under Feed the Future. We've already helped 7 million small farmers harness new techniques We've boosted the value of their goods uh, that they sell by more than $100 million, and that means higher incomes for farmers and more opportunities for farmers. You know, in a place like Ethiopia, we've been hearing about farmers who, who are getting new loans, sometimes for small, mechanized products like this that can make all the difference. One farmer said this salary changed his life uh, because you know, he was able now to send his child to school. Well, we're seeing some of these new technologies that will unleash even more progress. That includes how farmers here in Senegal are using their cell phones to share data so they get the best price when they bring their products to market. I met with a young woman farmer who had started off with one hectare, now has 16. She has been able to uh, achieve enough growth that she's now bought a tractor. She's hired eight people. Now, we, that's not what we ordinarily think of as business or entrepreneurship. But if you think about the number of Africans who are involved in agriculture and giving them the tools where suddenly they're getting better prices for their crops, they've got access to a marketplace, they now are getting enough credit to be able to mechanize their operations. And now suddenly they're able to hire some people in their surrounding villages. You've just suddenly seen a small business grow. When people uh, ask what's happening to their taxpayer dollars and uh, foreign aid, I want people to know this money's not being wasted. It's helping feed families. It's helping people uh, to become more self-sufficient. And it's creating new markets for U.S. companies and U.S. goods. It's a win-win situation. 